Hi, today I'm going to teach you how to create a Denovit Hartenberg or DH table for the SCAR manipulator. Here we have a kinematic diagram for the SCAR manipulator. There are four parameters we need to find for the DH table. The first parameter is A of I. The distance from Z of I minus 1 to Z of I measured along X of I. This is also known as the link length. Next is alpha, the angle between z of i minus 1 to z of i, about x of i. This is also referred to as the link twist. Then we have d of i, the distance from x of i minus 1 to x of i along z of i minus 1. This is also known as the link offset. Just to note, that if the joint is prismatic, then d is variable. The last parameter, theta i, is the angle between x of i minus 1 and x of i about z of i minus 1. We also need to account for any rotation needed to align x of i minus 1 to x of i about z of i minus 1. This is also known as the joint offset. And if the joint is revolute, then theta is variable. Now we can create a table and fill in the joint parameters for the SCAR manipulator. We have five joints, which gives us four links. We create a table with links one to four and the parameters AI, alpha I, DI, and theta I. Now we can find the DH parameters. For link one, we see that the distance from Z0 to Z1 measured along the X1 axis is A1. So that is our A of I. For alpha, we see that the axes are in the same orientation, so alpha is 0. For D of I, we see there's a distance from x0 to x1 along z0, so we mark D of I as D1. Um, just to note that in the textbook, it indicates that this is zero, but the diagram looks like there is a distance, so I'm entering D1 here. For theta, we have a revolute joint that we have to account for of theta 1, um, and there's no other rotation needed to align x0 and x1. But let's mark the revolute joint with a star here so that we know that it's variable. Link 2, we see if the distance from z1 to z2 measured along x2 is a2. Next, for alpha, we need to see how we can rotate z of z1 around x x2 to match Z2. And we see from this picture that we need to rotate 180 degrees. DI is 0 because the distance from X1 to X2 along Z0, Z1 is 0. Now for theta, we have a joint variable of theta 2. This is, we'll mark this with a star. Um, there's no additional rotation needed to align the x1 and x2. Next, let's look at link 3. For link 3, the distance from z2 to z3 is 0, so ai is 0. For alpha, we see that the z-axis does not change orientation, so alpha is 0. For di, the distance from x2 to x3 along z2 is d3. This is a joint variable, so let's mark it with a star. Now, for theta, we see there's no offset between x2 and x3, and the joint is prismatic, so we enter 0. For length 4, the distance from z3 to z4 is 0. For alpha, 
we see that the axes have the same orientation, so alpha is 0. For d of i, the distance from x3 to x4 along z3 is d4. And for theta, we know that this is a revolute joint. So we have a rev rotation of theta 4, and we mark it with a star. There's no additional rotation needed between x3 and x4 because they're already aligned. Now that we have our DH parameters, we can form each homogeneous transformation matrix A of i. Each matrix is represented as a product of four basic transformations. A of i is a rotation around z of theta i and a translation along z of di, and followed by a translation along x of a i and a rotation of round x of alpha i. We form AI by simply substituting the DH parameters into the equation. For instance, we take the parameters we calculated for link 1 and substitute into the equation to get A1. We substitute the parameters from link 2 to get A2, and the same for A3 and A4. Finally, we can find T, our transformation, matrix by pulse multiplying all the homogeneous transformations together. So T equals A1 times A2 times A3 times A4. Now the result of T tells us where the fourth frame is in reference to our base frame. And that's it. Thank you.